Yes, after many years of plans and proposals, electrification is finally coming to commuter rail in Wales. Exciting times. Hello and welcome to another Metro Construction Update, where today we'll be taking a look at the very first bits of overhead line equipment being installed along the core valley lines. Thank you very much to Ned from the Transport for Wales social media team for letting me know the location of the very first masts. The first of the masts and the gantries for the electrification project are being installed between Treforest and Taft's Well. So let's go and have a look. After boarding 150.253 at Landa, the first instance of electrification work is some foundations for the masts which started to appear just after passing Radha Weir. Pulling into Tafswell Station, I noticed that since I was last here, the track has been quite well ballasted. While I was editing this video, I found a video on Transport for Wales's Twitter showing some of the ballast work being done. Upon leaving Tafswell and crossing over the river, the very first of the masts came into view. Slowly more and more start to appear, and after passing Treforest Estate, there's quite a lot more of them. I then got off at Pontypridd, and after taking in the views, I got straight back onto the train to get some more shots. As I left Pontypridd, I noticed some familiar steel trunking being installed parallel to the track. This is the same stuff I've seen around Cardiff Central, after a few platforms there received overhead electrification a few years ago. To my knowledge, this trunking is used exclusively for containing wires associated with overhead electrified lines. Heading further down the line and masts are starting to come into view again. As you can see, some are just posed so far, while others have been topped off with the overhanging truss pieces. Before this next bit, let's rewind a little. For the last however many months, you may have noticed dozens and dozens of stacks of these things have been strewn across the side of the railway lines. But what are they? I didn't even know until recently, but they're cable troughs designed to house signalling, communication and power cables along the length of the railway, and they connect together like Lego, or more accurately those multicolour things you probably had in school. They're even made out of a 100% recycled plastic polymer. For months they've been dotted along the side of the railway awaiting installation, but as you can see following the ballast work I showed earlier, there's a stretch of them now installed through Taft's well, and they look great, they look a lot better than the old concrete ones. As we approach Radha Station once again, the final stop of the journey, let's take a quick look at the electrification project as a whole. The next decade will see all the commuter rail links around Cardiff and South Wales electrified, we hope. However, right now the main priority is the Merthyr and Rhonda lines. These lines, along with the City Line and the Bay Shuttle, will be serviced by Class 398 Stadler City Link tram trains. These trains will likely enter operation in early 2024, and they are electric only, so you can see the rush to get the lines they will serve electrified. 
By contrast, the Rumney, Corriton and Vale of Glamorgan lines will be served by Class 756 Stadler Flirts. As well as being incredibly sexy, these trains are tri-mode, meaning they can operate on overhead lines, onboard diesel generators, as well as onboard batteries. This could mean that electrification on lines these serve may take a more leisurely pace. So-called smart electrification will be used for the South Wales Metro, and this is quite cool. In the case of the Merth and Ronda lines, the original plan was to have several bridges along the lines altered and lifted higher to achieve the necessary clearance needed for the live overhead conductor. However, this would have been very costly and disruptive. The plan now is to use a new technology called a PES, or Permanently Earth Section. This means that the overhead wire will continue under low bridges, however the few metres of the wire closest to the bridge will be dead and carry no current, being isolated from the live lines either side the bridge by a special isolating connector. This ensures smooth and continuous travel of the train's pantograph and eliminates the need to retract and then immediately extend it again. For the brief period the train is not connected to a live line, it will just coast through the section, with the help of onboard batteries should the operation of the train need them. After arriving at Radda, I took my first ever ride on the city line and had the whole train to myself, but you'll have to wait until the next video to see that. That's all for today, I hope you've enjoyed watching me blabber on about railways. While it might not seem like it, many hours go into making this one, so if you feel I've earned it, please consider liking, sharing or even subscribing. I've been very ill trying to record this, if you can hear it. Um, I guess this video is brought to you by Vix Vapor Rub. Uh, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next Metro update.